California. Tourists flock here and take to the open road to indulge in all the Golden State has to offer. These days, California has become a destination for a new breed of experience seeker, the wine enthusiast. About 20 million of them come every year to learn about the growing regions, discover new wine styles, and indulge in one of the most rewarding wine experiences anywhere in the world. Welcome to sunny California. Hi, I'm Michael Fagan. In this program, we're going to travel through some of California's finest wine producing areas. If you have a passion for wine and an interest in learning, there's lots to discover as we travel along California's endless freeways. The story of California wine is best told through a journey. This is a land that offers winemakers incredible opportunity. I've been following the California wine industry for decades, and I've watched the growing areas come of age. In California, these regions are called AVAs, or American Viticultural Areas. They're defined geographic appellations with unique climatic conditions and soil features. Today, there are over 100 of these federally recognized AVAs across the state. A general understanding of an AVA's growing conditions can tell you a lot about what's in the bottle. This stretch of coastline in Santa Barbara County takes a dramatic turn and travels east-west for about 80 kilometers. That east-west orientation channels the cool ocean air directly into the valleys. Santa Barbara County is just 150 kilometers north of Los Angeles along California's central coast. This dynamic region has become synonymous with great Pinot Noir. But thanks to its unique geography, it's able to do a lot more. I don't think any other region in California has made so much progress on quality in recent years. Fess Parker Winery and Vineyards is our first stop. It's a family-owned winery sitting on 289 hectares in the Santa Ynez Valley. The unique feature of Santa Barbara is the fact that we have what we call transverse mountain ranges. These east-west valleys, what it does is it allows a, uh, a real sort of funnel effect off of the Pacific Ocean, um, creating a, a, a cooler to even cold uh, growing condition. And that's really what separates Santa Barbara County from other growing regions in the state. Pinot Noir, fortunately, grows very, very well in Santa Barbara County. And a lot of it has to do with the cool climate uh, and the thin soils uh, that we have in the western part of the growing region, both in Santa Rita Hills and also Santa Maria Valley. So we're able to get the fruit developed and get the fruit ripe, um, but still uh, retain a lot of natural acidity to, to the Pinot, which, which continues to provide a lot of elegance and, and finesse to the, to the wine as well. So what grows best in uh, Santa Barbara County? Well, I think we have a couple examples here of uh, some of the better varietals, and, and it really, we kind of split the, the county in two. When you're out in the western part of the county, it's really the Burgundian varietals, um, Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs. Uh, they seem to, um, to thrive in the cooler climates out there. It gives them a nice long growing season, to slow ripening and, and, and maturity. Um, when you get back here into the eastern part of the growing region, um, now we're really focused on Rhone varietals, so Syrah, and for instance, what we have here, Viognier, Grenache, things of that nature. Um, those tend to, to be the, the varietals that work best for us here in Santa Barbara. I'm always amazed by the diverse range of climates and soils available to California grape growers. Many will tell you it's the best place in the world to make wine. 
there are over 100 grape varieties cultivated throughout the state. But the major varietals are Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Gris for white wines, and Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Noir, Syrah, and Zinfandel for reds. Unlike other regions, California's growers are free to plant the assortment of varietals best suited to the vineyard location. The next stop on our tour is a great example of diversity at work. Located halfway between LA and San Francisco, Paso Robles is a traditional farming region with a rich winemaking history. Paso Robles, farming and agriculture traditions are well established and the frontier spirit runs deep. Today, this is California's fastest wine growing region. The consistent brilliant sunshine and long growing season are well suited to the late ripening Bordeaux and Rhone varietals. Eighty to ninety percent of what you taste in that glass is coming right from the vine here. These vineyards are part of approximately 800 hectares owned by J. Lohr Vineyards and Winery. The extremes in daily temperature here sets Paso Robles apart. The diurnal difference, the difference between the daytime high and the nighttime low, is the greatest here of any wine growing region in the United States. What's so important about that is during the heat of the day we bake out the pyrazines, those elements that make a wine taste like bell pepper or asparagus. Great for your salads, not so good for your wine. But during the nighttime, we preserve the acidity and the color in the grape, and that's what makes these big luscious wines. Unseen below the ground, an understanding of soil makeup and composition is essential to the new generation of California growers. The soil is crucial. For instance, in this hilltop vineyard where we grow our, our Cabernet Sauvignon, it's nice and sandy. In recent years, much of the research in California's wine industry has focused on understanding soil composition as a way to adapt vineyard strategies and improve quality. This is interesting. Now, why do you do this? Well, what we're looking at here are the soil profiles. Uh, you'll notice here we only have about 18 to 24 inches of topsoil, and as a result, all of the nutrients and water holding capacity are in that top 18 and 24 inches. The root system doesn't seem to go down that deep. No, it doesn't, and that's part of the beauty here. These vines are much smaller, maybe two-thirds the size of our normal Cabernet Sauvignon vines, and as a result, it's a natural break on the growth of the vine. Instead of the vine spending all of its energy growing this lush foliage, it concentrates the energy in producing world-class Cabernet. Now what is it about this area that makes it so ideal for Rhone varietals? I think, um, you know, to make this area you know, really ideal for Rhone varietals is, is a couple things. One is, is the soil, and two is the weather pattern that we have. Austin Hope is another of Paso's high-profile producers responsible for Triana and Liberty School brands. So what do you have planted on this property? So we've got 40 acres planted here. We've got our main varieties are Syrah, Movedra, and Grenache. Each clone has its own um, style, its own preference. Being able to take these uh, different clones and putting them all together as we blend, we can make a more complete, uh, more interesting wine. Many of California's winemakers are inspired by the great blended wines of Europe and increasingly are crafting blends of their own. The traditional art of blending varietals brings out the best in the vineyard and can result in more complex wines. The ever questing of, of making the perfect wine, I think blending is, is the only way to achieve something like that. We are a bit modest in not realizing how great Pas Robles as a grape growing area is. The state fair is an American tradition, but here, the ribbons are awarded to labels, not livestock. 
Wine has become an important part of California's economy, contributing over $50 billion a year. And it seems everyone is enjoying the lifestyle. Heading north, we're now traveling up the central coast towards Monterey. Another awe-inspiring sight. You are looking at the largest continuous vineyard in the world, 3,200 hectares of vines at Delicato's San Bernabe operation in Monterey County. California is a world leader in the wine industry, and growers are looking for ways to protect and manage these precious resources for future generations. Today, a green revolution is quietly sweeping through California's growing regions. There's a particular philosophy that, that's really popping up in California, and it's called running our business using sustainable business practices. And by sustainable business in the wine business, we're referring to making decisions that are environmentally sound, economically viable, and socially just. One of the great things about California is that we truly lead the world in sustainability. The idea that we will leave the land to the next generation in at least a good estate, if not better than where we found it ourselves. The green shift in California has been gaining ground over the past 10 years and is dedicated to improving the land through non-chemical practices in the vineyard. While protecting workers, it also creates healthier, better tasting fruit. Sustainable practices are a very important part of how we grow grapes and make wine in California. And that's what sustainability is always gonna be about, is continually improving your practices for today, for tomorrow, and for generations to come. About one hour north of San Francisco is the town of Healdsburg in Sonoma County. This region of California is a must-see for wine enthusiasts from across the globe. Millions visit wine country every year to taste, learn, and experience the hospitality firsthand. Folks who experience Sonoma County these days are looking for an experience that includes everything that gives Sonoma County its wonderful diversity. And it's all part of the lifestyle. I now understand why so many tourists visit here. Sonoma is probably the most diverse growing region in California, perhaps the world. The cool ocean mist from the Pacific pushes into the coastal regions while the interior valleys remain warm and dry. The range of soils and growing conditions here are almost endless. Sonoma offers the wine lover incredible variety. Kinda hard to see the Going through Verasion, we're starting to see some color. We're almost all the way through Verasion. At Rodney Strong Vineyards, Stefan Sotishuk believes Sonoma's thin soils produce great wines. That's really quite dry. Dryness is something that we've been hoping to get, and we hope that goes all the way down to the vine roots, because in an effort to make better wine, we recognize that, especially in red grape varieties, small berries have more color and more flavor than large berries, because really all the color and flavor are in the skin. So if you can convince the vines to give you small berries, you'll just make more concentrated flavors in the end. California's commitment to the land stems from a belief that the soil is a living thing. Up here on the hillsides and mountaintops, Sonoma's vines are pushed to their limits. We are climbing up the mountain in the Alexander Valley. This is part of the Mayacamas mountain chain, which is the heart and soul of Sonoma County. Randy Ullum is Kendall Jackson's wine master and believes that these elevated sites produce wines of exceptional depth and complexity. The reason we like the mountaintops and the hills is because as you go up in elevation, the temperature lowers a bit, and on top of that, the soils just get pathetically poor, and you get a, a lower yield with smaller clusters and smaller berries, and that's what makes the wine so nice. Kendall Jackson is a leading producer based in Sonoma, who built their reputation on Chardonnay. Their wines express the individual character of Sonoma's valleys. Each valley has its own nuances, whereas 
Napa is basically one valley and all very similar. In Sonoma County, you have all these different areas. Definitely every wine in Sonoma County will showcase a sense of place. And that sense of place links with terroir. Almost every major grape varietal can be found within Sonoma's AVAs. In the cooler areas, like Sonoma Coast, Green Valley, and Russian River, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay thrive. Dry Creek, Zinfandel, Alexander Valley, and Knights Valley are known for their Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. At the southern tip of the county and Los Caneros, Sonoma has one more surprise in store. Here, they combine Chardonnay and Pinot Noir to make world-class sparkling wines. In a number of California's cooler regions, growers are producing grapes with low sugars and high acids required for great sparkling wines. And consumers are taking notice. Better clonal selection of vines and new winery equipment have helped winemakers produce sparkling wines in a style unique to California. California sparkling wines tend to show a little bit more fruit character because it's a little bit cooler in Champagne than it is here. Our wines tend to be a little bit softer. Gloria Ferrer is a Spanish company making sparkling wines in the traditional method. Their style utilizes long bottle aging and underground cellars to impart added character to the wines. The native people here, the Wapo, call this area the land of plenty. It's the region most identified with California wine. Wines of power, quality, and legendary status. This is the Napa Valley. Just east of Sonoma, Napa stretches over 50 kilometers from San Pablo Bay north to Calistoga and includes some of the state's best known AVAs. To bring all the beauty from the vineyard into the glass. The Napa Valley has a surprising diversity of microclimates and soils with a range of grape styles. But undoubtedly, Cab is king. Well, there's a spectacular view. It's a pretty place, no doubt about it. No kidding. So Doug, what is it about Napa that makes it so fantastic for Cabernet? Um, Napa and Cab, it's a match made in heaven. It's, you know, it's warm enough to get the Cabernet ripe, but it's not too hot to blow off acidity. Perfect place for growing Cabernet. Schaefer Vineyards is typical of many premium producers in the Napa Valley. With limited production and increasing demand from around the world, people stay on waiting lists for years for the opportunity to buy a few bottles. We're right in the middle of what's called the Stag's Leap District, which is kind of the southeastern part of the Napa Valley. It's a, an area that's been well known for Cabernet for 30, 35 years. It's warm enough, but not too hot. It's, it's just like the Three Bears. In the 1960s, Napa was a quiet rural valley, but today it's one of California's most popular tourist destinations. Here, wine is big business, part art form, part theater, and everybody loves the ride. Pinot you know, Gris is a super wine that is uh, good to seafood. Napa, and really California as a whole, have created a new category of tourism that capitalizes on the public's interest in fine wine. It encourages visitors to learn more about the winemaking process and experience some of the best of California lifestyle. Touring through wine country allows you to appreciate the subtle regional differences in style that define California winemaking. Now, as we travel across San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and into the city renowned for its love of fine wine and food, is there a defining California style emerging? We've come to the press club to find out. A wine tasting cellar in the heart of the city featuring different regional styles from around the state. They offer a warm wine country experience for the urban enthusiast. 
Every bottle they pour is unique, but they all share a special character that says California. I describe a California style of winemaking as fruit forward in its nature, uh, especially compared to the old world uh, styles. Uh, primarily, California has such a wonderful uh, place to grow grapes that we're able to really develop some ripe fruit. Because of this, you're, you're starting to see uh, consumers using these uh, new wines that are developing in California uh, to really complement California cuisine. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. California has a dynamic culinary scene, and chefs create dishes to complement the local wines. At Cellar 360, another of the city's wine education centers, they showcase California wine styles through creative food pairings. In California, it's the mecca of food and wine pairing. And to talk about an evolution, I think, I think it's right here. We really focus on what's around us, what's local, we have so many different landscapes and we bring it together. And I think definitely in San Francisco, we're celebrating that food and wine and what we have and let's, let's, let's experiment and let's try all different combinations and see what works for you. Back in 1976, California gained world attention by winning a legendary blind tasting in Paris. Now over 30 years later, with new wines, greater complexity, and a focus on protecting vineyards for the future, they're among the world's elite. Wines of the Golden State, they capture the California sunshine in every glass. The sun is shining. The sun is shining.